buying coffee has become a breeze in today's digitally connected world. Just tap on an app, place your order, and pay using an e-wallet on your phone. Meanwhile, credit cards, they've also become contactless and into other easier payment methods. So how are Singaporeans adapting to these evolving forms of payment? Millis Enriquez takes a closer look. Singaporeans are spoilt for choice when it comes to payment options. Normally I'll use cash because I'm more traditional. I actually use contactless card. I don't carry a wallet around with me. For me, I like you to use um, net so that at least I can get my transactions recorded and I know exactly what I spend it on as well. E-wallet or contactless payment because it's more convenient compared to withdrawing cash. I tend to go with a uh, credit card with PayWave but I also you still use quite a lot of cash. As Singapore moves towards becoming a smart nation, the cashless route is taking hold. If you look at past year alone, right, we've actually uh, reduced uh, the amount of cash handled for, to support consumers in payments by about 1.2 billion. Right now, we are over 80% of all payments that happen in Singapore on Visa are contactless. So that will just continue to explode. But in this cashless arena, where do credit cards and e-wallets stand? In the past five years, the number of main credit card holders in Singapore has seen a decline. But the amount of billings charged on cards has risen steadily during the same period. More and more Singaporeans are shopping online, spending more money online. It's estimated that two in three transactions that's done online is using a credit card. This is a market where people need instant gratification, people need, you know, as every time they use a payment mechanism, they want cash back, they want points. Credit cards are still dominant there where they provide you the richest offers and perks. A report by payment processing firm WorldPay shows that e-wallets are trailing behind when it comes to payment transactions online. That's 67% for credit cards versus only 10% for e-wallets. Still, mobile wallet adoption is gaining traction with the rise of fintechs. Singapore-based Utrip is a first mover in offering a multi-currency traveler wallet. Investors are well aware that uh, people are using their mobile phone for everything now. And uh, of course, a payment is really no exception. The Utrip payment platform allows users to pay in 150 currencies worldwide and comes with a prepaid MasterCard that can be topped up through credit and debit cards. Partnering with MasterCard still gives us a really good range of um, acceptance worldwide. So now our product can be used at 30 million merchant points around the globe and uh, we, f we feel that that is a stronger proposition um, for our users. So far, Utrip has processed over a million transactions in its platform since it launched in August last year. We do get a small uh, revenues from the merchant side. To the consumer side, it is completely free. So we don't charge any transaction fees, no markup in our exchange rates, and also there's no minimum spend or no minimum balance uh, required to use our product. For DBS, adding another layer of technology to its e-wallet payla has offered more benefits to users and its merchant partners. You can start ordering uh, your coffee before you even get to the store, right? When you get to the store, it's ready, just click and you go. One company that we, we, we helped with uh, and we did actually a research, they were able to actually serve 15% more volume without incremental headcount. DBS says credit and debit card transactions continue to see double-digit growth year on year. But Payla has also seen rapid growth thanks in part to the adoption of QR codes. There are two different components. One is what we call P2P, person to person, and the other one is what we call P2B, right? The growth is actually exponential. Uh, P2P, while it's a lot bigger, uh, is still growing at four times uh, year on year and uh, fee for P2B is growing at 16 times year on year. The opportunity to displace cash in Singapore is big. So I think there's a role for every player to sort of find ways to pay. Mass transit and urban mobility is key to uh, enable 
for the entire smart nation, an ecosystem whereby it doesn't cut across to a certain sector of the population, but it enables everyone to have that experience. As mobile payments become more prevalent, banks will likely be pushed to further innovate. It's only a matter of time before uh, credit and debit cards become all digital. Um, for example, um, uh, Apple Card uh, is one innovation uh, that will replace the physical card with a virtual card. Disposable virtual card numbers, meaning that every time you use, you can have a different virtual card. Suddenly, the security becomes very much more enhanced, where you don't have to worry about the fact that there's just one card number that can get compromised. While physical cards could become a casualty of technological disruption, payments via credit cards could remain healthy. We think credit card and bank transfers enabled through wallets will likely uh, see a spike in volume at the expense of debit, cash and check. But some say that could only happen a few years down the line. About 40% of the payments are still cash and that's just on the consumer side. There's a big play there in either the elderly segment and also the millennial segment in the way they transact with their bank and in the way they transact and pay. In the end, Visa says the payment journey really starts and ends with the consumer.